What is your larger take? We're in Davos, we're taking a longer look. What is your larger take of what's going on with the economy in the United States and globally? Well, I think in the United States, you know, we're obviously fighting higher interest rates, but we're doing it from the perspective of an economy that's in quite good shape. Uh, one of the reasons for that is an outcome of the pandemic. And, and during the pandemic, people stayed at home. Uh, what, what every country's government didn't figure out is the 90% uh, who kept being employed uh, would end up having way more money uh, after the pandemic uh, because their cost structure uh, collapsed. Uh, they didn't go to movies, they didn't leave their homes, they didn't travel, uh, they didn't buy expensive clothes. And that two and a half trillion dollars of extra money was in the banking system uh, and they've been spending that money. And that's been keeping the economy performing better than people expected. They've spent about half of it. Whether they spend the rest of it, whether they save it, but that's an extra stimulus, uh, if you will, uh, that's kept the U.S. economy uh, moving ahead pretty well. The Fed, of course, uh, is trying to do something with inflation. Uh, and they have to, uh, assuming they really want to get it all the way down uh, to 2%. Uh, so, so they've been very aggressive uh, moving, and the question is, how much effect does that have? Uh, we're starting to see uh, the economy slow down a little, um, uh, and particularly uh, in interest-sensitive areas. One would think it would have had more impact, uh, but it hasn't yet. And the reason we've developed almost a, a two-part economy, uh, interest sensitive areas um, like housing uh, where new house construction is down 19 percent usually in a recession it goes down 35 percent so you can see how far we are uh, away from the bottom uh, it's affected wall street uh, and markets uh, because when you raise interest rates uh, very high from a percentage of where you started it'll have adverse incomes. And there are other parts of the economy uh, that, that frankly are still extremely strong that raising interest rates hasn't affected yet. Stuff like travel, airlines just can't even cope with the volumes. Uh, resort hotels, people after the pandemic were so grateful that nothing worse happened to them, that they just want to celebrate and live life. And anything that touches that kind of personal consumption uh, is doing extremely well, not really affected very much so by the Fed. How does this affect the Blackstone uh, outlook? I mean, you have an awful lot of money that you need to put at work and keep it work and get returns on. Uh, how does a slowing growth pattern and higher rates inform your investments? For example, I know you're very big in real estate. Well, we saw this coming, actually, and started talking publicly about 18 months ago, way before the Fed, about high levels of inflation, because we could see it in our portfolio companies. And what we did is we tried to change what we do to adapt to what we were pretty certain was going to happen in the future. So for example, uh, in terms of an investment area, uh, in the credit space, um, we, we switched all of our investments to floating rate. So we're on the side of the Fed. As they keep raising rates, our customers keep making more and more money. Uh, and they can get up into double digits now with senior secured loans. That's what people used to earn for equities, uh, and it's pretty easy to do that now. In real estate, we've concentrated in basically the only two areas that aren't being adversely affected. Uh, real estate's an industry with at least six different sub-areas. If you're in office buildings, particularly in the United States, that is an area under enormous stress. 20% vacancies, 
but that doesn't even count the people who, who aren't going to work. So that's, that's a, an area that is facing real headwinds. Uh, and shopping malls, uh, not so wonderful uh, for a variety of reasons, uh, basically with home shopping. Uh, housing, houses are going down now, okay, in, in value because mortgage costs have doubled for regular people. But areas that are doing extremely well, uh, first of all, is uh, uh, warehouses. We're, we're the largest private owner uh, of rare warehouses in the world. Uh, and that business is, is fighting all the trends. It's up double digits, even in the face of the Fed. Uh, and and uh, apartments, uh, rentals uh, are also doing well. They come down a bit. They're going up somewhere around 5% now. But there's other types of residential uh, rentals that are going up up to about 9%. So at a time where some parts of real estate are really suffering, yeah. and people say, you're in real estate. We're actually the biggest in the world in real right. estate. Something bad must be happening to you. Yeah. Well, if you really concentrate your ownership uh, in the two good areas, right. then you know we're having uh, just a fine time in that real estate area. Stephen, what are some of the external factors that actually could affect things? Right now, there's a lot of talk about the debt ceiling and a lot of threats about maybe really tripping that. People think it's unimaginable. Maybe it is imaginable. You've been through this quite a few times. There have been a lot of threats of it. Some people think maybe the Congress is a little more extreme in some respects than has been in the past. Uh, what do you think is the danger of actually going into default or coming very close to it? And if it were to happen, how catastrophic would it be? Well, I, I can't speak to the political dimension because the House has just formed and we watched it on television and it didn't look real functional uh, on the Republican side. Uh, how that will play out, uh, I really don't know. Um, the history has been people use the debt ceiling to make a point. And the point from the Republican side is that we're spending too much money uh, and they want to make sure that their colleagues on the Democratic side understand that. Uh, an actual default, we've been through this a number of times where it's gotten quite close and it's got a variety of really bad effects and uh, particularly with the dollar being the reserve currency of, uh, of the world, which gives us a special status. It allows us to issue debt uh, when other people can't. You mentioned about the political uh, disunity, if I call that, in the Republican Party, and you're not a politician, you don't involve that. At the same time, as I recall, you did support Donald Trump early on. Where is the leadership of the Republican Party right now, and where should it be from your point of view? Well, I said publicly, uh, as to the next presidential election, that I think we need to move on uh, for both parties. It's a next generation uh, of leaders. Uh, I, I think it's important uh, that, you know, particularly uh, uh, on, on the Republican side, we, we've had a series of four losses uh, in a row, the 2018 midterms, the presidential in 2020, the special Georgia election, which actually was in 2021, uh, the midterms in 2022. I think the public uh, has spoken uh, and would like to see a change. Uh, there are lots of interesting people. Anybody uh, you like in particular? Uh, I always like somebody in particular, uh, <laughs> but you don't know if anybody's running uh, at, at the moment. Nobody's declared uh, except the president. Uh, and, and so, you know, I think we wait and see on that one. Uh, but, you know, there's always interesting people. Uh, and, you know, I, I, in my life, you know, uh, people barely had heard of Bill Clinton, yeah. uh, he became president. Yeah. Uh, the same with uh, Barack Obama. Yeah. Uh, and, and so, and, and those were all two years out where we are now. Yeah. And uh, so, so I, I'm a patient person. <laughs> uh, you know, experience has taught me yeah. uh, that, that yeah. watching how things yeah. develop, uh, because there's so much yeah. change uh, in America is an important thing.